Where will we be going on today's stop? Did you know that Kochi Castle in Japan has withstand numerous attacks and natural disasters throughout history? Our first stop, we are stopping at Kochi Castle, which was so, so cool, guys. It was built in 1601 and between 1601 and 1611. And there is even like a different gate, like a fake gate that people think is the entrance just so that, you know, you could deke people out and, you know, defend your castle before anyone comes and uh, destroys it. There is like a spout there that you can see and that like gets water out of like the upper half of the area. Like they had drainage, you guys. Like this is crazy. And I don't know who this guy and the horse is, but I thought it was cool and I wanted to film it. But like we had to keep going up and up and up, which was crazy because like, and look at how tall it is. Like I know it doesn't really seem like much, but for a really old castle, that is a big deal. So that's the fake entrance, by the way. And you have to like keep going up. This one's the real entrance. And it's also very low. Like you have to, um, for tall people, not me. You have to be careful about hitting your head. Our tour guide was um, very, you know, making sure, like, look at how low these are. Because she wasn't very, like, I think she was pretty much my height. So as you can see, like, she could even touch <laughs> the rafters there. So here is the actual castle. And we had to take our shoes off and carry them with us. And, um, like, I didn't realize that we had to go up and up and up and up to the top of this castle. I had no idea what we were going to do. I think this is a picture of like what the samurai looked like, like maybe the guy that owned the castle or something like that. But uh, this was the first castle we went to in our whole trip to Japan. So this was like super, super cool to me. And, um, you know, just seeing what the gardens looked like is just so pretty. And this is the emblem of Kochi Castle, like the family that owned Kochi Castle. I'm not really sure what everything is in this room, but there was like this amazing wood carver. And these are his pieces that are in like pristine condition. And um, like some guy just carved this out of wood in the 1600s. You guys like what? Anyways, so beautiful this work. If Chris's grandfather was there, he would have just like died because like this stuff was just so stunning and your grandfather was like super into doing ducks and stuff too. So, um, but like there was tatami mats everywhere, which was really cool. Hey, I'm actually wearing the same socks today. That's hilarious. They actually had a kimono out here and in the 80s they made a, a TV show based on Kochi Castle. So this was the outfit from the... Uh, movie and or TV show and just the architecture is just so stunning and just how beautiful everything is here so we're slowly moving through the castle and we're going to be going up and up and up let me tell you it's kind of nerve-wracking I think we walked up three flights of stairs Chris was it three it was three or four three or four yeah and they get steeper and they get steeper and steeper so the middle there you can see is Kochi Castle and then around this is pretty much what the they have a little diorama of minis of what the castle and the grounds would look like back in the day um but I like that they have this kind of stuff around while you're in a queue waiting to go up. And this is just, you know, other artifacts that have clearly fallen off the castle that they have um, preserved as much as they could or, you know, made new again. Um, but yeah, it's just so stunning to see all of this. So here we are up in the Kochi Castle, which I gotta say, even watching it back, I'm getting kind of nervous watching this. I didn't think I like I think I have a little bit fear of heights but yeah this is from the top of Kochi and um yeah it's just so pretty I I really really loved seeing everything here um uh I gotta see if I can find the footage and put it in at the end here of the dancers when we were leaving Kochi Castle because turns out it's like a specific form of like dance 
that my girlfriend is like super into, which I had no idea about. But look at how steep these are. Sorry for the footage being kind of bouncy, but I got footage of us going down these steps and we needed to be in socks and it's very slippery. <laughs> it's like they dusted it to high heaven because it is nerve wracking. And you gotta also, I mean, I don't have to worry about it because I'm short, but you also have to watch out for your not hitting your head on uh, while you're going down and people are going up while you're trying to go down so it was it was a lot i gotta say it was a lot but it was still really cool i gotta say it was still cool and we saw my first kitty in japan i cannot believe and he had a little teeny tail a little boppy tail but i had never seen cats yet i thought we'd see a lot more cats all over the place but we didn't so those were the steps to go up to Kochi Castle and from a distance that's what the castle looked like and we were walking around the very top, okay? The very, very top is where we were walking around and you get a really cool bird's eye view of the whole city of Kochi really from up top there which I thought was really cool. Yeah, it was just so neat to be at the top. I had no idea what to expect and I was very pleasantly surprised with the whole experience at Kochi Castle. I would definitely recommend 10 out of 10 if you're in the area. I had such a blast going to see this very historic place. After that, we also got to see all of these rice fields. They have such a neat way of of um, irrigating the rice and just making sure that everything is done right and how it's done and it was neat to just see the whole experience because I just had no idea and here's some like delicious mochi and I think it was lychee or sakura um, other deliciousness there was more rice um, fields I wanted to show you guys and I'm obsessed with this area because there's this cute little whale-like character here, um, but I'll get into that in a minute. This is a really renowned last samurai kind of thing in the early 1920s or maybe turn of the century. Anyways, he was very forward-thinking um, and wanted to open up Japan to the world and went around to like really uh, promote just... Um, more forward thinking and he ended up getting assassinated at like 30 something I can't remember what but um, Yeah, these were cadets that were going into the army and they got a picture of them And also one of them was really nice and offered to take a picture of that couple there It was just so cute. <laughs> well, I, I I only got the tail end of that, but it was just so precious But anyways, there's this whale character because turns out we were at like the aquarium I think or close to the aquarium and the, the water was so beautiful here But like you don't want to go in it was so choppy They said like don't go in the current is so bad, but yeah, there's this whale character everywhere and I became literal obsessed He's my like my new favorite mascot of, of all time and so we ended up getting the aquarium but yeah there he is and there he is dressed up like the samurai I'm just obsessed we also went to a sake brewery we didn't actually get any footage from there but we got some delicious sake and this was what the place looked like and you could buy um, some sake and stuff so there's the samurai again and um, and the waves and the water and everything else. And here is the Kochi dancers. I will not interfere with their beautiful work. I will let them do it because yes. But yeah, I had no idea this was going on and we were on the top floor of of the ship. So um, that's why it's really small like that. But the next day we were in Buchan, South Korea. It was actually pretty crazy. They, they are a big port city, as I'm sure you can tell. Um, so we needed to do customs leaving Japan and going into South Korea and then also going back from South Korea into Japan. So it was really um, 
a little bit of a process, but it was actually pretty streamlined pretty well. I couldn't complain at all. Um, but we are on route to a, I'm pretty sure it was a more modern temple. This is a bridge that opened up in the early two, I think the year 2000 and it was like a really big deal and super big and stuff and there was like fireworks but yeah so we're going to this really cool temple it was also close to buddha's birthday hype hype his birthday is in may just like mine um <laughs> so they had all of these um lanterns up for him and these are all of the zodiac characters um and if you take a picture with your zodiac animal then you have like really good luck or something like that i can't remember what it was but it was so hard to find the hair or the rabbit or whatever you want to call it because they didn't have ears up so it looked like a snake to me <laughs> at least chris's was so much easier to find because he's the rooster but yeah there's also a snake so i was really confused and there's these cute little turtle chairs and hands i needed to get because i was like what is this they're just like the funniest thing um and the bamboo is like so pretty just hanging over itself like this so we're going into the temple area and um yeah i'm really happy i got all of this footage because it's just so much fun to look back on everything i haven't looked back on anything yet so it's been really neat to actually see all of this and um like just I don't know. I'm just lost for words because I'm just so happy we got to go on this such amazing trip, you know, and a lot of people don't get to experience anything like this. So, you know, this is the first of many trips to Asia, I am sure, all over Asia. And I mean, what a better, there's no better way, I think. But as you can see, they're like getting ready for prayer in here. I got this little bit of footage, but then I felt bad because a guy was like carrying and big bags of rice and he was like waiting for me to like finish filming like they're so nice there um but yeah this is like the whole story of buddha and it was just like a young girl that ended up getting pregnant mysteriously and then having her child on the side of the road and like look at how pretty just the underside of the the temple is and seeing somebody you know praying and doing their worship was really neat to see that it's a working temple you know it's not just for people to come and look at um but yeah, and like that Buddha statue is huge. Like look at those people standing beside him. And I think also this was another dragon, a uh, water deity of some kind. And there, there we've gone over the bridge. So we were on the other half there where the lanterns were. And now we're on this other side of the bridge. And you could like tie up your, your notes onto this little trellis thing which was really cool to see and then it's like if you kept going i'm not really sure what there would have been because chris was thinking about us going that way but i'm happy we didn't end up going that way we just kind of like did a loop-de-loop -loop around um and like oh it was a huge path yeah i know but i don't remember oh it was another park okay yeah, we but we were just so looking we lost. would have gotten lost yeah we're just looking at the other side of where that temple was that we just looked at really here and then we're just gonna go up and around there was also this buddha belly that if you tap the belly you're like going to be blessed with a sun and it's like funny seeing all these old people tapping the belly i'm like i don't want to touch that no thank you peace out so we also went to a really cool area that um has these like really old colorful buildings um and like turns out a lot of people nowadays don't want to live in this area because the young people so here you go you can see it's like so colorful and pretty here a lot of people want to live in apartments so the thing is like it's a very aging area in the sense that it's like mostly just old people or tourists that are in this area um but it was really pretty i'm really really happy that we got to walk through this area and then also bts came here once so then they've got bts on the wall there of course which is like oh that's right it was called gam chan that's where we went um but yeah that was really neat there was like this little bun shop that we went into and there's like cats and um what was it little prince everyone's obsessed with the little prince here i'm not really sure why but 
I don't know if it's just this area or what, but everyone loves little prints. Those those would read your fortune and you'd have to like use this little mallet to knock open the ball if you happen to be able to read Korean, but we can't. Turns out our tour guide said that it's actually very easy to learn Korean because the emperor at one point wanted to make it easy, very easy for his people to be able to learn the language. So I thought that was really neat. And up there, up those little steps, is the only well for the whole entire area back when there was no no running water and i'm talking about like back in the 70s they didn't have access to running water didn't look like it was what it tastes like yeah well she's got like a little stick that you poke it with but i don't know how easy it is to poke it oh you just lift it up well i kind of stopped weird it's like um pasta yeah. like not fully cooked they were also selling these were they marshmallows with like ice cream on the inside i think um and they blow torch them and they have um you know just like at korean barbecue they've got like a little funnel thing that sucks up the the fumes which i think is so cool i don't know why places don't have that in north america honestly we're so behind here So with the jelly, it you it didn't matter what color you got because it all just tasted like a jelly. Um, and then you you decide what flavors you want on either side. And then if you want some nuts, and then that's what gives it the flavor. So we got blueberry and strawberry, and they were super delicious. And it's just like everywhere in South Korea and Japan, all of their sewer grates just look amazing. <laughs> They're just so much better than our sewer grates here. I think that was for the film festival. That's why they have that there. But it looks really neat regardless. And so we're, we are en route to Korean barbecue. Um, again, we did slightly break our veganism because we ended up having a egg quiche. No, souffle. Souffle. But it was delicious. And I'm so excited that we got to have this experience. Like legit Korean barbecue. Um, and we got to hang out with our table mates from the ship. Um, and it, it was just so much, so it, just a really cool experience. So here you can see all of the fixings we have at our table before, um, we got our hot, legit coals. Like, look at that. And then she puts the grate on top and then we get our kimchi and a hot sauce to heat up. And then look, then she, she puts this on, which sucks up the air. And so it was really neat to have this experience. So there's our quiche and um, yeah, like kimchi over rice and you get to see everyone else and what it looks like. It was just so much fun. I'm so happy we got to do this. And this area here, believe it or not, actually reminds me of like Chinatown, um, also K-Town in Toronto. And this is the Buchan international film festival which they call beef by the way <laughs> i love that so much and here you got your ajimas selling food on the street which was so neat to see i felt a little nervous filming them but i did get this one guy like yeah. the, they were doing like I don't know, some kind of like pancakey type stuff, which was really neat to see. And so, you know, they he puts it in the hot oil and you you gotta like leave them for a while and then you um, pound it down with this like little mat thing he has here, the mallet, or I don't know what you call that thing. Anyways, I'm happy that I took the time to film that. We also found like this everything store that had like so many art supplies and stuff, but we were kind of in a rush, so I didn't end up filming any of it. 
but Buchan is also, since it's a port city, has a lot of seafood and they're very big about their business. So it's like they wanted you to, our tour guide was like, just keep walking, make sure you keep walking because they will try and sell you stuff. So like, do not stay there very long, just keep moving. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I ended up getting some stationery from that shop and they had like even Switch games and uh, action figures and stickers and stuff like that so you'll end up seeing it when I do like a haul stationary haul later on in the segment um, but yeah like this place was so cool I'm so happy we went to South Korea I absolutely love Buchan it's a very like artsy fartsy area and also a lot of um, displaced people during the war of Korea itself ended up uh, like refugees ended up in South Korea and like I was mentioning it actually didn't have running water or anything until the late 70s like natural gas and stuff like it was not a thing like bathhouses were what you did so it was really interesting to have a tour guide that had experienced that and talked to us about it because you don't really think that close to your own lifetime that would happen you just assume that everyone has these things you know what i mean and to learn that you know other places just because you have it where you live you know really humbles you to realize that not everywhere has the um, luxuries that we have or just to experience the things that other people experience you know and to hear other people's stories are just so neat so I'm really happy we got to have this experience I would love to do Seoul for a whole week and uh, Tokyo for a whole week itself so hopefully one day we can go back and do those things when our daughter is a little bit older but here are a lot of fun pictures from the temple as you can see and then also from uh, Gacham the colorful area all those colorful homes it's just so stunning I just I can't believe people wouldn't want to live here that's the place that we got the um what was it the I want to say lychee but the tapioca ball pretty much and yeah it was really neat to see that everyone's obsessed with the little prince and the the beef the <laughs> international film festival there um and seeing the ajimas have their food stalls and things and you could just sit down there and have some uh gimbap and things like that it was just such an experience I just had so much fun going to Kochi Castle and Korea. I definitely wanted to make sure I found a cruise that went to South Korea at all because I didn't want to just be in, in Japan the whole time because I'm like, you're so close, you know, and I have become such a fan of Korea over many years of watching lots of K-dramas and loving my K-pop so much. So it was kind of like a dream come true. And going to Kochi Castle and knowing the history and all of that amazing stuff was just so cool. I cannot believe how historic that area is. And yeah, I, I couldn't feel more blessed that I got to go to those two amazing places. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more travel adventures. We still have a couple more videos in this series, so I hope you guys are enjoying this, and I will see you guys on the next one. Don't forget to also take a look at my Patreon, because we've got some cool rewards going on there right now, as well as my Etsy shop, because I'm a full-time self-employed artist and you guys even just going and checking it out means the absolute world to me i love your freaking faces i will see you guys on the next video and goodbye